So now I am um, going to introduce um, Argentina um, to talk about her experience after the second Moldovan American Convention and about her vision on how we can do better as a community. Thank you. It was less than a year ago that our nonprofit project, Backpacks for Hope, was conceived. And it is a great honor to stand in front of the Moldovan American community today. My inspiration came from another Moldovan while reading an article in the, in the University of Alaska newsletter about an alumnus who was organizing a graduation ceremony for high school students in her village. Her name was Mariana Branishti. She was from Hrtopul Mare, and I contacted her. I wanted to do something for children, and I asked if she would be interested in working with me. Mariana described the situation for the neediest of kids, and that's how Backpacks for Hope was born. In May, when I attended the second convention in Chicago, I realized how many young and smart Moldovans are in the US. I knew that this project could have a life if I could figure out how to find them and how to work with them. In August 2015, we delivered 105 backpacks to her top, and these are the lessons we learned. Um, video, please. Ghiozdane din America pentru copii din Hârtopul Mare. O promisiune făcută peste ocean s-a transformat în bucurie la Hârtopul Mare. La începutul școlii, copiii au avut ghiozdan nou, echipat cu toate cele necesare. Așa cum au promis în urmă cu ceva timp, câteva moldovenice stabilite în America au adus deja primul colet cu ghiozdane pentru zonele sărace ale Moldovei. E o lume minunată în care veți găsi O lume cu mult soare și mii de jucării Pentru copii O păpuță Și ne-a numit pizza O căciolă Ia uite ce frumoasă Sunt Sunt o căciolă Braniște Daniel Backpacks for Hope este proiectul care a adus atâta fericire în sufletele copiilor din Hârtopul Mare. Mariana Morari, inițiatoarea proiectului, a venit special din America pentru acest eveniment și a înmânat personal cele 105 ghiozdane pentru 42 de familii nevoiașe. 105 copii am ajutat, am, am oferit acest ajutor deoarece... Eu însă mi-am avut astfel de copilărie ca acești copii. Știu mult ce înseamnă un mic ajutor și cred că acești copii merită să fie fericiți și să-și trăiască copilăria. Asta cred de când am fost mică și astăzi, în sfârșit, văd cum visul meu devine realitate. Sunt așa de mulțumită și așa de fericită că am putut ajuta acești copii. Ghiozdanele au fost pregătite din timp cu multă sârguință de Argentina Parasca și Jana Gaibu și au fost donate de copiii și părinții din școlile orașului Chicago, atât de moldoveni cât și de americani. Se pare că Argentina și-a inspirat propria familie să facă un bine. Toți membrii, de la mic la mare, s-au implicat în donație. Eu și frații mei am făcut un ghiozdan pentru fi um, cineva... Și noi am scris o scrisoare, am pus un ghiozdan. Ce um, Să aveți un an fericit, frumos. Ce ai adus? Pixuri, cărți, haine și cred jucării ca să ajutăm copii. La fel de fericiți au fost și părinții școlarilor. Cu venituri extrem de mici, oamenii își făceau griji că nu vor avea de unde să le cumpere rechizite. Pe această femeie o cheamă Inga. Are patru copii și nu mai face față cheltuielilor. Doar soțul lucrează la mina de piatră pe un salariu lunar foarte mic. 
foarte, foarte greu. Stăm la gazdă, deocamdată vrem să facem casă, dar e foarte greu cu trei copii. Ajutoare ni se acordă, dar foarte puțin și nu chiar suntem băgați în seamă întotdeauna. Așa, suntem înlăturați. Ne mai uităm în hăinuțele de anul trecut, încălțămintea de anul trecut, dacă încă le vine, dacă merge, îi mai îmbrăcăm și anul acesta, că altfel nu putem, nu ne permitem. În afară de ghiozdane, fetele au mai reușit să trimită în țară un scaun performant în sprijinul unui băiat de doar 16 ani, care suferă de distrofie musculară. După aproape șapte ani, Ionuț va putea merge din nou la școală. Din cauza că nu a avut un scaun performant până acum, a fost nevoit să participe la ore de acasă, iar profesorii l-au ajutat în acest sens. Lacrimile de fericire sunt neprețuite pentru gestul tinerelor care au adus atâta bucurie în sufletele micuților școlari. Faptele bune merită popularizate, iar fetele își doresc să mai facă astfel de acțiuni, deoarece toți copiii merită să aibă o viață fericită. I'm sorry. Um, I d we decided to show the video because I don't really want to go into the details of what we did. I think it's pretty clear, it's pretty simple. We collected backpacks um, and we sent it to a village, to a rural community in Moldova. Um, I call this project a basement project. We ran it out of somebody's basement and all of us were volunteers and we put it together because we wanted to, not because we had to or because somebody had asked us. Um, So what, what I want to do my presentation about, though, is why does this matter? Why does it matter that you can, um, you can put your energy and your drive into delivering 105 backpacks into a village for the neediest of children? Why is that relevant to what's going on in our country and what's happening to our community in the United States? Um, well, in, you know, in my experience is that um, Little is known about the cause of um, rural poverty uh, and the effects that it has on children and how much, how, how, what, now in what great numbers there are children that live in rural poverty that have their own issues. And outside of Moldova, not enough people know about it. And doing the project by itself and talking to other people and soliciting donations Um, is making the cause known to the entire world. And honestly, I think these kids deserve this kind of attention. Um, in working with people and reaching out and organizing the, the drive for backpacks alone forced me to meet people that I would never have known. Um, and I really believe that that strengthens the community, the American, uh, Moldovan American community community and it makes us work together on real solutions and it um, it just unites us around solutions um, not just around problems um, one of the things that we really tried to do was to work with volunteers and to use not institutions not government agencies not um, non-profits in Moldova, but real people who helped us deliver and helped us put it together. So from the volunteers that we used in America to the, to the people that helped us deliver our work in Moldova, we used individuals and we stressed the importance of you know, in empowering individuals and showing, um, you know, we talked earlier about civil society. I mean, this is civil society at work. This is regular people pulling their efforts together and making a difference in somebody else's life. So um, it's, it's an important lesson for people in Moldova as well, because they are very reliant on inefficient institutions to deliver you know, for them. Um, why I love this project is because there was a real need, and we were able to deliver on a real need. It's concrete. 
We didn't have to use, um, there was no red tape. There was, it was just a straightforward donation. Um, the people who were involved understood it. And I think that as um, donors, we felt empowered by the fact that we could help um, an entire village um, of children that could be proud to attend school in the new year because a lot of them um, couldn't afford even a backpack. They go to school with a plastic bag. Um, I definitely think that um, the, this kind of work inspires confidence and brings hope. And, you know, of course, if you work with children, this is like the most basic thing you can offer from the outside. Um, so I am very proud of being able to make that kind of a difference in somebody else's life. Just bring a sense of hope and stability and uh, a sense that um, somebody else or somebody really does care or somebody wants to make things better for you or to better your life. Um, and finally, um, you know, we saw through this work that the, the culture of the community changes when they know that people that are not related to them want to help them. And it makes it okay for um, people in the village to step up and help their own uh, you know, their own people when somebody is in need. Uh, I think sometimes people have hesitations. They think it's not cool or it's for silly people to help. Um, but, you know, make, it validates, you know, the, the whole idea of, of just helping the needy in their own community. And, and we saw that that happens. I guess I'm saying kindness is um, it's like an infection. It spreads. It, it changes things. It, it just turns things for the better. Um, so, with that in mind, um, I would like to, to tell you about what, I, what my future, what the vision of what we want to do is. And I'm um, coming in front of the diaspora with the proposal to um, allow other people who want to do this kind of work to come forward. We have a framework that allows us to do this kind of projects almost anywhere in the United States. And if anyone um, would like to run this kind of a project, we know, how, you know, we know how to run it, we know how to collect backpacks, we know how to ask, we know where to take them. So um, the idea of this kind of project was not just for me to do it once a year in small amounts in Chicago, but to allow other people that want to run similar kind of projects to come forward and we have the format to allow them to participate. So that's something that if your heart is beating for doing something real and concrete, um, please find me and talk to me about it. Um, and then how do you get involved other ways? Um, if you know a rural community that needs this kind of help, you can manage the project, or at least you can recommend it. You can donate money. We use the money for packaging and for shipping. You can um, donate services. Like, for example, if you are really good with computers, come talk to me. Uh, we're also looking for storage spaces. Um, there is, um, for fundraising, you could do parties, garage sales, bake sales, lemonades. I mean, the idea, I mean, we have many, many ideas. But um, there is m many, many ways to get involved. Uh, donate unwanted or redundant, redundant gifts if you have children. Um, at weddings and baptisms, encourage donations to our charity. If you, um, instead of a gift, sometimes people, you know, uh, this is a common practice. Um, and, you know, if you're tired of getting things you don't really need, you know, that's another, you know, thing you can put forward for your guests. Um, and we need volunteers, both in Moldova and in the U.S., so if you want to volunteer, please talk to us. And finally, I just want to thank, at least publicly, I want to acknowledge a, a few people that were so instrumental to the success of this project. And um, I put their names out there, um, uh, you know, hopefully you know most of them, or at least the names uh, sound familiar. And um, yeah, I want to thank my family for not kicking me out while, uh, for two months while I was very busy with, with this project, and for my children who understood that 
um, you know, that we have to do something um, in Moldova for other kids and them kind of trying to understand what that meant. So um, I'm, I'm pleased to, um, I'm pleased that we could deliver and that I could be here and I thank you, but I do have a closing statement that I would like to, to read to you. Um, I know most of you look at the present at this presentation and you, I know I can see by your faces, you're very pleased and it's very nice. Um, you may be thinking, who are these kids? That's not how my cousins live. You may come from an amazing family that loved and supported you all the way. Maybe every success you experienced is owed to a teacher, a parent, or a neighbor. On your path, what a great start. But let me tell you that the plight of these kids is real even if you do not know them personally. My own children were shocked to see the scars of burns on some of their faces. One of our recipients was in a house fire at the age of one. Her body was mutilated and she is almost blind. Another one of our little beneficiaries has not lived the day of receiving her backpack. Only at six years old, she drowned before we got there. Even sadder, we had another child, another six-year-old, who was needy enough to have that backpack. Underprivileged Moldovan children endure abandonment, neglect, emotional and physical abuse, accidents, alcoholism, child labor, human trafficking, drownings, house fires, all documented but not enough discussed. For as long as this is the reality for almost 200,000 children, Moldova does indeed face a bleak future. But here is the good news. The projects for underprivileged kids are the most effective way to change society from the bottom up. A little bit does indeed go a long way. A little kindness or a pair of shoes, an art set, a soccer ball, a musical instrument or a book can really change a growing mind. We may not be able to change the immediate, but through compassion and attention, we can start teaching the kids the value of the enduring human hope for a better tomorrow. You don't have to support our cause, though I hope you do, but please do not remain indifferent. Support the cause that agrees with your values. Start your own projects. Visit rural communities and schools when you travel to Moldova. Talk to your relatives and your friends and burst every denial bubble out there. Moldovan society turns a blind eye to the cause of children living in rural poverty. What a shame if we do not try to do something. For improving the lives of children is easy and it yields the greatest results. Each person present here has something to offer a needy child. I am certain of it. Our job is not just to help and leave. To model these children into good citizens, we must prevent them from losing their hope and their dignity. And that is how we will change Moldova for better. Thank you.